So what is virtual construction? Well, in the industry today, this is kind of a humorous look at what challenges we're facing, not only as general contractors, but as owners and as designers as well. And it's just essentially everyone has a different view of what the project is, and everyone has a different uh, view on what they need to do. And so modeling is one way that we found that we can overcome a great deal of those challenges. And our tagline for what we're doing is essentially build the project twice. And I know that probably sounds kind of odd the first time you hear it, but essentially we build a, uh, a virtual prototype in the computer. We find 90 to 95 percent of the problems. We fix them in the computer. And then we can go to site and just worry about building the building. Construction, we're, we're the only industry that builds a full-scale, full-size, full-cost uh, prototype every time we do a building. And uh, I really think that there's a better way to do it. And I think modeling is uh, a really a key technology and a key process to, to accomplish that. And so you can see a couple of uh, comparative screenshots here of of uh, our computer model versus what's actually installed in the, uh, in the field. So the big goals behind using virtual construction are risk management, especially as a general contractor. It's uh, communicating and collaborating and sharing all of this information that's, that's within the model and within every project with every team member so that we all have access to it. We can all use it and use the same information. Uh, spend more time planning and less time fighting fires, and then really removing construct coordination from the construction site, doing it in the computer first again, and then uh, just just building on site. And it always comes back to quality, time, and cost. And so we really feel, and we've seen in our own operations that. Uh, modeling gives us a chance to, to increase the quality and to decrease the time and to, to add value. So here are some, uh, some examples from, our, from different phases of projects, pursuit, pre-construction, uh, construction, and some self-performed work. And here's the projects that we'll kind of walk through here. So Metro Gardens, uh, we used it for uh, during the presentation to the owner to try and win the project. Uh, and then the biggest thing that we used it for on this one was a 4D schedule and actually extrapolating a, a 5D, which is the 3D model, the, the cost of the project every month, and then the manpower loading as well. It's a fairly large project in Denver, Colorado. And you can see that we basically took monthly snapshots and were able to show what the billing is this month, what it is to date, and then the manpower that we need on site for this month. So uh, here's just kind of a quick summary of uh, you know, how long it took us, what the cost to us was basically, and then kind of the value added. Uh, it definitely helps with the ownership group because they can then take this information to their lenders and uh, there, there's no mystery involved. There's no, you know, it answers a lot of questions that typically come up and everyone can essentially understand, uh, you know, looking at the model, what the project is and, uh, you know, what it really is going to need, what you need to really build the project. Uh, here's another example of, of our pre-construction. Uh, we use this again for in the pursuit phase. And then the big use on this project was the 4D schedule of excavation and construction. So here's just some quick renderings of the project. And then here's a, a 4D schedule of the uh, actual excavation. So this this is actually about a 90-foot hole when it's all said and done. It's about 170,000 cubic yards. So it's quite an effort to undertake to, to get this out, get all the dirt out and in an effective and efficient manner. So we use this with our showing subcontractor as well as our own internal team to work with to, to figure out exactly how we're going to do this. 
Uh, we also used it for quantity checks with our estimators and being able to, to get basic quantities out of exterior walls, interior walls, floor slabs, and then again the excavation. Uh, so it was, it was definitely a competitive advantage during when we were pursuing the job, and then the, the shoring and excavation coordination between our subs, ourselves, and the town of Mountain Village was, uh, was pretty powerful. Here's a, our next example is uh, during the construction phase. This is Memorial Hospital. This was actually our first project that we, we really used uh, virtual construction for. And this is in uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Some quick renderings that we used to, to work with the client and the designers. And then site logistics. Uh, this, on this project, that was it was very important because this is actually when we showed up to site. This is how the project looked. Uh, we we uh, took it over from another GC, and uh, this is in addition to that, it's an expansion to an existing campus. And so here's just a couple of uh, quick. quick uh, site logistics boards that we put together to show the project team how all of this process is going to work. And the, the highlight really on this phase is that this is the existing, was the existing uh, emergency room, and which had to be demolished after the new ER was built in this building. And so we're just trying to communicate how that's going to work and how we can uh, all get to the same end goal of, of completing the project. On this project, the, the single biggest use we used for or, uh, used virtual construction for was actually the coordination of all the systems. It is a hospital. It is a very complicated geometry. And so being able to find all of these uh, coordination errors or, or problems before we ever start was uh, incredibly powerful. So you can see the architectural, the structural model, uh, the MEP systems, combining it all together, and then being able to run the clash detection to find all of these, um, these uncoordinated pieces. So here's just an example of, of one bit of the clash detection report that we were able to hand over to subs in order to assist with that coordination process. So uh, you can see kind of at the bottom, 500 clashes were found in the virtual model and solved in the computer rather than on site, which saved a, a very significant amount of time and money for not only us, but our, our subcontractors as well. Uh, our final example is uh, 55 West, which is a project that we self-performed the concrete on uh, the entire building, but our modeling efforts were spent mostly on the parking garage. And uh, I got a chance to go down to the site before we started and visit and saw uh, the uh, foam core model because the way the parking slabs works, it's actually fairly complicated. So to get their head around it, they uh, actually built this foam core model. And so what we were able to do is build the model in 3D in the computer, and we're able to take any view, any section that we want, and actually walk around the entire model so that we can understand it and we can able we can coordinate or communicate that with everyone on site. 